In this video, I'm going to show you a technique on how to solve math problems on ACT exam by plugging in values. This one says the expression negative 8 x to the third power times the quantity 7 x to the sixth power minus 3 x to the fifth power is equivalent to. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to choose x equals 2. I'm going to see what that gives me for this expression. Okay, so negative 8 times 2 caret raised to the third power parentheses. 7 times 2 carat 6 minus 3 times 2 carat 5. Okay, so to put that in the calculator, that's going to give me negative 22,528. Now my goal is to find out which answer choice also gives me the same value. So I'm going to take the first one, do negative 56 times 2 to the ninth power plus 24 times 2 to the 8th power. Okay, and that's going to give me the 22, negative 22,528. Okay, so we got it on the first try, so we didn't have to go through all of them. Okay, so our answer choice A is correct. So this one says, which of the following expressions is equivalent to the fourth root of 256 times x squared? So again, I want to choose a number for x to plug in. So I'm just going to set x equal to 2, something nice and easy. And I'm going to find the fourth root of 256 times 2 squared. So you're going to need to use the calculator to figure this out. So on a TI-83 and 84, you're going to type in the number 4 first. Then go to math. I choose option 5, which has an x and a radical. Press enter. And then I'll put in a parenthesis. And then 256 times 2 to the second power, so 2 carat 2, or just use the squared button, and close the parenthesis. Okay, if you do that, enter. So that is equal to 64. So now I need to find the answer choice where I plug in x equals 2 is also going to give me 64 for the answer. So if I do that for answer choice a, it's going to be 4 times 2 to the fourth power. If I do that, that gives me 64. Okay, so that matches my answer, so answer choice A. You know, if I were to continue, I do 4 times 2 to the twelfth power. That's going to be 16,384. Next one would be 16 times 2 to the fourth power. So give me 256 and then 64 times 2 to the fourth power. It's going to give me 1,024. The last one would have been 128 times 2 to the eighth power. And that would have given me 32,768. But since we got 64 on the first answer choice, you know, that's be our final answer. So this one reads, for all real values of x such that negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 0, or you can read from the middle, x is greater than negative 1 and x is less than 0, which of the following expressions has the greatest value? Okay, so this says that x is basically between negative 1 and 0. So I'm going to choose a value for x somewhere in between there. It doesn't matter what, what value. Uh, I think the easiest would just be negative 1 half. 
or just negative 0.5. So I'm going to plug in negative 0.5 into each of the answer choices and see which one gives us the greatest value. So the first one is just x, so that's going to be negative 0.5. And for answer choice b, I'm going to do 3 times negative 0.5. That's going to give me negative 1.5. And for answer choice C, I'm going to do negative 0.5 plus 1. That's going to give me positive 0.5. And for answer choice D, we've got 1 divided by negative 0.5. That's going to give me negative 2. Then E, negative 1 divided by negative 0.5 is going to give me a positive 2. Okay, so our answer E would be the greatest value. Now just to show you, I could, I could pick any number. Let's try negative 0.99. So x would be negative 0.99. So that's right under negative 1. So for answer choice B, 3 times negative 0.99 gives you negative 2.97. For answer choice C, negative 0.99 plus 1 gives you 0 0.01 and for answer choice D 1 divided by negative 0.99 gives you negative 1.01 .01 repeating and then for answer choice E negative 1 divided by negative 0.99 gives you a positive 1.01 .01 repeating so again answer choice E gives us the greatest value So this one reads, given consecutive positive integers a, b, c, and d, such that a is less than b, b is less than c, and c is less than d, which of the following expressions has the greatest value? All right, so I need positive integers, and basically I need to increase. So I can just set a equal to 1, b equal to 2, c equal to 3, and d equal to 4. So I just pick easy numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to answer choice A. A is A divided by B. So 1 divided by 2. It's going to be 0 0.5. So I want to put this in decimal form so I can compare and see which one is the greatest. Okay, so for B is B divided by C. So that's 2 divided by 3, 2 thirds. It's going to be 0 0.6 repeating. C is going to be C divided by D. So 3 divided by 4. It's going to be 0 0.75. Choice D is A plus B over B plus C. So A plus B is 1 plus 2. B plus C is 2 plus 3. All right, so that gives me three fifths. So that's going to give me 0 0.6. All right, choice E is going to be B plus C over C plus D. B plus C is 2 plus 3. And C plus D is 3 plus 4. Okay, so that's going to be 5 over 7 which is going to be 0.714. So looking at all these values, the 0 0.75 is the largest one. So our answer choice is C. And when you're putting this in your calculator, when you have fractions with more than one thing, you know, on top or bottom, you need to put those in parentheses. So the A plus B needs to be in parentheses. B plus C needs to be in parentheses. So if you're putting this all in, at one time. Okay, same with the choice E. Remember to put the top and bottom in its own set of parentheses when you plug it into the calculator. Okay, so if you do that, then you should get the same answer values. So this one says the expression n factorial, read as n factorial, is defined as the product of all positive integers up to and including n whenever n is a positive integer. For example, 4 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 
whenever n is a positive integer, which of the following is equivalent to n plus 1 factorial times 6 factorial divided by n factorial 3 factorial? So instead of working this all out and getting it into a simplified form to match one of the answer choices, I can just choose a value for n and plug in that same n value into the answer choices and see which one works out. Okay, so I want to pick an easy number. Uh, I don't want to do 1 because it might be too easy. So just in case I do n equals 2. So if I do that, it gives me 2 plus 1 factorial, 6 factorial, divided by 2 factorial, 3 factorial. Now if you're doing this on your calculator, you want to put the top in its own set of parentheses and the bottom in its own set of parentheses when you put it in your calculator. Okay, so if you type that all in your calculator, you should get 360. Now I want to figure out which one of the answer choices will also give me 360. So I can know, I know right away that B and C won't work out. So if I take the first one, do 120 times 2 plus 1, or 120 times 3, that gives me 360. Okay, so right away, I got lucky I got the first one, first one correct, so I don't really need to test the other ones, but just for example, I'm just going to try that. So if I do D, it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1 over 2. This can give me 3. So for answer choice E is going to be 6 times 2 plus 6 factorial over 3 times 2 factorial. And again, I need parentheses just to be sure that I'm doing this right. That's going to give me 8.89 E12, which is 8.89 times 10 to the 12th power. So it's going to be a really huge number. Okay, so remember our correct answer choice was A. If you don't know where your factorial button is, on the TI-8384, if you go to math, and then along the top, you go to PRB, the last one, and then choice four will be your factorial. So if you're using any other calculator, you might have to check out your manual to see where the factorial button is. Okay, so this example, we plugged in N equals two into the original question. We got 360. And we're going to plug in n equals 2 into the other answer choices to see which one also gives us 360.